Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Herbie's Community Cooking Corner for April. Let's see, what is this? April 9th, 2024. I should know it's April 9th because it's 9 a.m. my time. That matches the date perfectly. But uh, anyway, I digress. Today is actually going to be a very simple call. We're going to make what is purported to be C's fudge, fudge from C's candy. There's actually two different fudges I can make of theirs, and I might tackle the more complicated one on a future call. But um, this is actually a straightforward one. It just calls for five ingredients, one of which I don't have, but I'll survive without. And I think you all too will if you taste mine virtually, and that is the walnuts. But uh, otherwise, we need vanilla, eggs, butter, and chocolate chips, and uh, that's it. So um, should be a relatively uh, quick call today. So uh, looking forward to that. All right. So first of all, a question had come up about the Hershey's fudge from the old-fashioned can. That is a little bit more complex than I even know how to cook, let alone what I would tackle on the cooking call. It requires like candy thermometers and things like that. So uh, more complex than what I do. If anybody actually uh, wants to make it and knows how to, uh, make sure you talk with me ahead of time. Well, you'll have to talk with me ahead of time, but it is a little bit more complex and uh, you will have to describe everything you know, extremely well. But uh, so yeah, we're not gonna do the uh, Hershey's fudge there. Okay, what we are gonna do though is our regular fudge. So like I said, this calls for some basic ingredients, chocolate chips and whatnot. So the first thing we actually need are the chocolate chips, which I had earlier. Oh, there they are. So two cups chocolate chips, which is basically your standard sized bag of the uh, semi-sweet. Though uh, you can use uh, milk chocolate or white chocolate if uh, you want. And we're going to melt them and the butter in a saucepan. So we don't need a mixing bowl for this first part. We will need it for the second part. I'm just going to open this bag of chocolate chips. It has the regular uh, seam on it. Now, the first thing you need to do with the chocolate chips this is very important. Um, make sure you sample a couple for quality assurance. Yeah, you, you need to know that they are chocolate chips. Very, very important. And, um, whoa, some are spilling on the stove. That's not good. Good thing I cleaned the uh, stove, but uh, I can assure you these are chocolate chips. If I was not sure that they are chocolate chips, there are several indicators like the, what chocolate chips feel like, which they are flat on the bottom and come to a little rounded uh, cone type uh, point on the uh, top. And of course they taste like chocolate chips. Okay, so there you go. And um, next we're going to need our stick butter, which I've uh, already gotten the uh, stick out. It doesn't matter if it's softened or not, it'll help. But it's not crucial for this recipe because everything is going to get melted anyway and uh, all over low heat. So I'm now going to turn on my uh, stove. I've got the old fashioned burners with the uh, dial. So I just am turning it to the left because that is low. Now I want to say hi to uh, my uh, crew this morning that's uh, working in the background uh, diligently and all that, uh, spinning dials and all that. We've got uh, over on the Zoom side, Diane. And um, over on the Clubhouse and streaming side, we've got Nikki. Um, Nikki has uh, not been with us for a while, so glad to have you uh, back with us today. And um, for those of you who remember this, she, she, she says that there's no audible that are playing in the background today. So, uh, um, which is, which, I mean, if there is, well, you know, hey, I, I, I listen to books while cooking, so, uh, and not necessarily cookbooks either. So well, there you go. Okay. So the other thing this calls for, by the way, is eggs at room, two eggs at room temperature and 16 ounces powdered sugar. Now, I did get a question ahead of time from Mr. Jonathan. He wanted to know what is the difference between this and the other fudge that I made a couple years ago. I actually have no idea because I know I made a fudge a couple years ago and I don't remember if it was this exact same one or a different one. 
But uh, it's been a couple years, so we're making it again if it is. And uh, I'll have to go look at the recipe to see what I use for that one. Because I actually was wondering that too. But it was like I said, I'd give you all fudge. And uh, this is what I picked out. That is that. Okay. Um, and then the other thing we need is vanilla and 16 ounces powdered sugar. And... Um, it calls for the box powdered sugar, by the way, which uh, mine's in a bag, but that's okay. So now is a good time for uh, if anybody has any questions so far on the, what I've done. Now is a good time. Melissa. Melissa, good morning, my friend. Oh my God, Herbie, those cookies. I mean, those chocolate fudge cake. When you make them, it's it's really amazing. How long do you eat those for? The chocolate fudge cake. Well, this is actual fudge, not the uh, cake. No, chocolate fudge cake. That does sound good. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> fudge is going to take a long period of time, actually, because one of the disadvantages of this fudge recipe is it does actually have to chill overnight. So we won't get to try it on the call. But uh, so the preparation is going to take, oh, about half an hour or so. And then um, the chilling part is what's going to take have to be done overnight, unfortunately. So that's the downside to this recipe. But um, my uh, question is, are we still gonna, are we still gonna make my leche cake still? Um, so glad you asked about that. That is was a very complicated recipe, and calls for some skills and things I actually do not have, including uh, some things with uh, some different spatulas. Mixing paddles, that one I, uh, I'm taking a look at still, but I don't think I'm going to be able to tackle that one. Is that, it was a very gourmet type cake. Sounds delicious. I'll say that much. It, it definitely does, but... If you want, I can get a simple one. If you're able There's to get a simple, simple one, that would be a very helpful, yes. Yeah, I can try to find a simple one on YouTube and I'll send it. All right. If you can do that, that'll be perfect. All right. Thank you. No other questions. No other questions. All right. You know what? Changing the heat to kind of medium low so it'll actually start to really... It, it's kind of starting, but um, maybe I'm just a bit too impatient. I don't know. Anyway, what else was I going to say? Oh, now next week we do have a very interesting recipe for you that I'm going to try. So we've got uh, several outstanding things that we got um, next week. Mint chocolate chip cupcakes. Um, it's more the frosting that is the mint, but uh, we're going to try that for next week. And then uh, Donna, I don't know if you're listening or not, my friend, but you'd asked about potato soup. So I'm going to look into a good potato soup recipe for the following week. So yeah, we're going to have our sweets back to back. There you go. So uh, that's what we've got. Ex now, while this is starting to melt because it's not doing, I don't need to stir it at the moment anyway. Let's deal with our eggs. So I set two eggs aside in the bowl. And the reason why I set them in a bowl is so that way they would not be able to roll out of anything. But they could get to room temperature. Why do they need to be at room temperature? I don't know. I guess it affects how the fudge works. I just do as I'm told. So anyway, I could have put them in the mixing bowl that I was going to use. That would have been a really good idea, but that's okay. I'm not going to crack first egg. And they only need to be out for like a couple hours to really be room temperature. I'm cracking them directly into the bowl. I How to make sure there's no shell? Well, just be very careful when you pull things apart. And um, of course, I've done this for a number of years. So it's one of those things that uh, practice does make uh, perfect. Next, we need 16 ounces powdered sugar. This is one of those tricky things because I can only find 32 ounces of powdered sugar. So I'm going to guess at what 16 ounces is, which is going to be quite a bit. And um, don't know if we can have too much sugar in the fudge, but can probably have too little. Um, so there is that. So now I'm just uh, washing up here because some of the sugar got on my hands. And before we get to the rest of that mixture, I'm going to go check on this. I've got 
spoon. Now, I suppose that if you wanted to, you could use the microwave to melt the butter and the chocolate chips. Just, uh, I would do that maybe in like 30 second intervals and stir often because you don't want it to be lumpy. So if you're not comfortable with using the stove, then you could. I don't know that it's going to harm the fudge or anything like that. Um, of course, cooking in the microwave. No, I've, I've always suspected that thing, actually, personally. So, and, the, and this one calls for the stove specifically, but... Uh, so yeah, just... I, I, me, personally, I'm not big into the microwave. I, I use it occasionally. I think that's one reason why ours has lasted for as long as it has, because I've had we've had our current microwave since 2010. And uh, it gets used, but just not on a daily basis. Okay, this is definitely starting to soften up. Okay. So, next thing, it calls for two eggs, 16 ounces of powdered sugar. It calls for a box of powdered sugar, so you don't really have to measure it if you can find a 16-ounce box. The problem is, is if you can't. Specifically, it says two extra large eggs, by the way. If you're going to use the walnuts, it's a cup and a half of oven-roasted chopped walnuts. One teaspoon vanilla, though, that's what we need. Let's see, do I have a teaspoon readily available? I am sure I do not. But you know what? I have a tablespoon. That's good enough because we're going to measure the teaspoon into it, i.e. Oh, no, there is a third teaspoon, actually. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to use three measurements of the third teaspoons. Doing fractions here in my own cooking call. So let's talk about the vanilla. If you've not gotten the vanilla before, it usually comes in a box. Now for some people, it literally comes in a bottle outside of a box because they make their own vanilla with bourbon and uh, vanilla beans. But this comes in a box that uh, you take the bottle out of. The bottle, as I've said before, is oblong, so you've kind of got a very longish bottom and a, it gets narrower to the top. I'm going to unscrew the lid. And the good news is uh, we don't have to worry about too much vanilla, I don't think. I mean, I wouldn't want to use the whole bottle, but... Uh, this does come with a little paper covering on top that we have to peel off. And uh, I have the nails this time to actually peel it. If I did not, then I could use a knife to pierce the paper or something sharp. Like you could try a fork, but butter knife should be sufficient. So nothing da dangerously sharp. Okay. And I'm pouring in the vanilla. I probably used a little bit much. And uh, Diane, did we have some uh, more questions? Yes, we do. All Spider right. Woman. Heidi, welcome. Now, that, that person that you were talking about that makes their own vanilla, who is that? Um, you know, <laughs> they come from New Hampshire. I know that. Oh, it's you! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you know but I, I will say that I think I know Courtney has also talked about it as well so I don't know if she makes her own but uh, um, you guys may remember for Courtney she did a call called In the Kitchen with Courtney okay this mixture is starting to uh, melt now so it's on a very low heat still but yes do you want to briefly tell them how to make their own vanilla there Heidi what we did was we got 30 year old aged bourbon and I believe it was about 750 milliliters. And we took a mason jar and we poured the alcohol into it. And then we ended up getting vanilla beans. And I think we ended up using two 10 packs of vanilla beans. And you just stick the vanilla beans inside of said jar. Uh, you mark it with the date that you start put the lid on it and you shake it and then you leave it in a cool dark place for usually about two months before you actually start using it and then you basically you can actually use the vanilla bean itself from the jar and you can open it up and you could use um, what they call the caviar, which is the actual beans inside of the vanilla bean pod. Um, and generally for one vanilla bean pod, it's generally, I think, one tablespoon or one teaspoon of 
vanilla bean caviar per pod. And then actually what you can do with the leftover vanilla bean is either start a new vanilla bean or a new vanilla extract, or you can put it into a small jar with sugar and make vanilla sugar. All right. Awesome. But actually what I was going to say is from a lot of the YouTube videos that I have seen or I've, I've listened to for different fudge recipes, they said most any fudge can be made either on the stovetop or in the microwave. It just depends on which one you want. All right. If you do it in the microwave, you just have to conti- make sure you stir it because it will not heat evenly. All right. Yep. That's what I thought. So first of all, I guess the one question everybody has is with the vanilla. Did, did you uh, s- sample the uh, merchandise of the uh, bourbon before uh, you put it in the uh, mason jar? I definitely do not. And ah, good for you. Nick does not do that either. All right. Um, for different reasons. We, we trust what we get, but you can definitely tell when it is it's vanilla extract because as soon as you open the lid you can smell it all right okay and we have another raised hand all right before we get to that i just want to describe what the mixture is going to feel like it's very smooth and uh, for the butter and chocolate mixture so i stirred out the lumps and uh, all right we got a no bake to the little cake recipe all right i'll take a look at that there uh, melissa Okay, so the mixture feels very smooth, and uh, all right, what have you? What have we got for questions? Phone number four three four ending in one eight six. I think that's Paige. That is Paige. If the if uh, we got two four three four numbers that call into community, if it's three nine three, it's uh, Trish, and if it's one eight six, it's my good friend Paige. Hi, Herbie. I just have a question for Heidi. Do you have to have to use bourbon alcohol to make the vanilla extract, or can I use something else besides alcohol? You can use, I believe, the other one that you can use is vodka. The only reason that we have, well, there's a few reasons that Nick chose um, the bourbon, and that is, for some odd reason, bourbon when you're using it with stuff that involves chocolate for some reason the bourbon brings the chocolate flavor out more interesting okay thank you and there yep. actually it's such a thing that was a chocolate whiskey so uh interesting okay very good melissa do you have your hand up again or did i forget to lower it i had it up again Sorry. okay okay did you get it already Herb? yes yes go ahead all right perfect uh, that fudge is really good. I like it. You're making me hungry. All right. So what we're going to do now with our mixture is that the chocolate's going to sit there in the pan for a little bit till we're ready for it. I'm going to put this other bowl that had the eggs in the sink, even though it really doesn't probably need washing, but you never know. I'm going to uh, now use a mixer, which I actually got assembled ahead of time. Believe it or not, guys, we're not going to go scrambling looking for the blades or anything like that. So uh, you should be able to hear it. I'm now going to... So that's, this is our egg, vanilla and powdered sugar uh, mixture. And, um, let's see, I think it's, I think we're supposed to blend this before adding in the chocolate. But let's double check. Yep. Okay. So we do beat the mixture. It's still a little bit lumpy in spots. I can tell. I use my fingers for this. That's the easiest way. But, um, we're going to put the mixer back on. This is a joy to mix because it's not a stiff mixture. We're not using flour or anything like that. Oh, that should be... Nicely blended. It is, and now we're going to add in our chocolate mixture. And I can tell just by how the pan feels how much mixture is going into the uh, bowl here. But um, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a spoon to uh, make sure, I guess a knife in this case, because I don't have any spoons at the moment. Okay, fine. 
to make sure all the chocolate mixture is out. Fingers also work well too for this because you can kind of feel. The only disadvantage with fingers in this case, I will say, is of course the mixture is a little bit hot. But that's okay. You can of course let it cool down before you do this. All right, we're gonna put this pan in the sink. And then we're going to mix it one more time. And I have the mixer on kind of like a medium type thing, but you can have it on low. You don't need to have it on high for something like this. And if you don't have a mixer, I think you could probably be fine with just like an egg beater for uh, this type of thing. And it's kind of getting a little bit stiff. It's not meant to be majorly that way though. All right. So then the last thing we need to do, well, I meant to hit the eject button and I flipped the switch instead. Okay. So I'm gonna put these beaters in the sink. So the last thing we're going to do is spread the fudge into the pan. It calls for the pan to be buttered. Now, technically we should be using a glass pan. I have a metal pan. Same difference as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. And uh, so as you can hear, this is a very simple fudge recipe. We're done inside of an hour. How cool is that? Um, so I'm using the spreadable butter for this. You can also use cooking spray, Pam, if you want, but uh, we have, I've got butter I can use. So I'm going to butter the pan, both the bottom and the sides and uh, just spreading the butter out evenly and then we're also going to make sure when we spread the uh, fudge mixture that it's even as well and then we're going to put her in the fridge and then tomorrow i will cut it into uh, squares what i should have done is uh done this yesterday and then uh could have sampled the fudge today that's okay um Something to think about next time I do these overnight recipes is uh, I'd forgotten that it actually needed to be chilled overnight or I would have done it that way, but that's okay. Okay, so there. And I'm buttering the sides of the pan too, so that way it's not going to, uh, it shouldn't stick to anything. All right, I'm going to put the butter back in the fridge now i'm going to uh and um we got somebody unmuted so if you can check your mute status everybody that'd be very much appreciated i know this call is boring but uh yeah you're stuck with me for a few more minutes yeah i'm not I'm not seeing anyone that isn't supposed to be unmuted. All right. So you can use a plastic, you can use a wooden spoon. I'm just using my fingers because tactically that's what I like the best, honestly. And I can uh, get the bowl that way, you know, cl clean hands, obviously. But uh, you can use a wooden spoon if you prefer. But I can tell this is going to be uh, some pretty good fudge. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I don't think it said anything about covering the pan so we're not going to worry about that so I used my hand to um, make sure that it's spread evenly 
so it just wants to, needs to feel flat all over. And uh, even, you know, without it rising, I can tell that it's going to, once it firms up, it's going to be a little bit, to, it's going to use a lot of this pan. And uh, did I mention what kind of pan? No, I don't think I did. We're using a an 8x8 pan. Actually, this is a 9x9 pan. It technically calls for an 8x8 pan. So, uh, that is how that works. So. Hey, and we have a raised hand. We have a raised hand. All right. Jill. Jill, welcome, my friend. Hello. Um, I was wondering, did you pour the um, chocolate and the butter? Did you take it off the stove and pour it into the bowl that had the eggs and the sugar? Yes. And vanilla? Okay, so you didn't put the other stuff on to the, into the saucepan. Mm -mm. Okay. I poured the saucepan into the bowl. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Yep, the, 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 this, by the way, is not a recipe conducive to a healthy living, so... Uh, That's okay. <laughs> Chocolate's good for you. Yeah, I just ho thought it was just the cocoa that's good for you, not the added sugar. True, but... Not, not, not that I'm complaining, of course. This is the, I, I didn't make this to be healthy, but I, I should have put the nuts in it just so I could feel good about myself. Okay. Well, guys, that's actually about it for today. So we can all... I'm going to rehash what I did, first of all. And then if there's any uh, questions, then uh, we'll get to them. So again, this is a basic fudge recipe. I, uh, it calls for two large, extra large eggs at room temperature. So you can just set them out a couple hours ahead of time. Um, a, a teaspoon of vanilla, 16 ounces powdered sugar, a stick butter, and two cups chocolate chips. So what I did is uh, the chocolate chips and butter, I melted them on the stove over low heat. But if you want to use the microwave, I would recommend doing 30 second intervals and um, stirring constantly. And uh, so you can use either one. And then I put the eggs, sugar, and vanilla. And if you had the nuts, you would do this as well with them. Put them all in the bowl, mixed it together. And uh, then um, set it aside. And once the butter and chocolate chip melted to a smooth uh, consistency, then I uh, added the... Um, Added that from the saucepan to the mixture and uh, mixed it all together, you know, mixed it once again. And uh, then spread it, spread it into an, uh, a buttered 8x8 pan. Actually, mine was a 9x9 pan, but that's fine. And I buttered the bottom and the sides, so uh, hopefully nothing will stick. And I set it in the fridge where it will chill for about a day. So tomorrow morning, I'll know exactly how it will have turned out. And of course, I'll probably sample it before then, you know how these things go. But um, <clears throat> don't tell anybody. And there you go. So that is uh, pretty much it for our uh, fudge. This is a C's fudge. And uh, with that, I'll take any additional questions on either the fudge or anything else you would like to talk about. Um, Herbie, I, I do have a question about this. All right. I've never heard of fudge with eggs in it before. And I wonder what they do to it. I've heard of marshmallows. I've heard of, like, corn syrup. Um, yep. You know, but I've never heard of eggs. Yep. Um, this one called for eggs. And... Uh... There are definitely plenty out there, though, that do call for, like, the marshmallow cream or the marshmallows. Um, that, that is definitely a, a common uh, one. And uh, if you don't want to use eggs, I think you... I'm sure plenty of the egg substitutes would uh, work just as well. Like, uh, I know applesauce can work as a binding agent. Um, and uh, whatnot. Um, and I think uh, flaxseed does as well. So
So, uh, yep. Flexi's supposed to be good for you. Yeah, it, it is. We don't have any questions so far. All right. So, um, question? yes. I do have one though, Harvey. All Where's right. my plane ticket? Where is your plane ticket? Well, it is online waiting for you to purchase it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. If you want to go cheaper, you can take the bus. <laughs> oh, we got a raised hand. We got a raised hand. All right. So, Nikki, when you get you the plane ticket, I will give you my address. But uh, there you go. All right. Okay. I recommend <laughs> you right. fly in the Hobby Airport. That's a little bit closer and a much smaller airport. So, all right. Who have we got? Okay, Teresa. All right, Teresa. Just listening here, and I have a question. You ever thought about make, maybe making a big batch and donating it to an ACB auction? Hmm, donating my cooking to ACB auction. That is an interesting idea. Um, you know... I, because I've not thought of it much because I don't do uh, much in the way of baking, but that is definitely a good idea, and uh, I, c I could I make just, fudge. You know, cause I I um sat in on the um, next gen auction the other night, and also got some won something on the um, CCLVI, and I thought about the fudge, you know, and of course Eugene was there Sunday night. <laughs> Of course. And I teased him and I said, I said, I said, instead of the cookie monster, he's the fudge monster. Mm -hmm. You know, that is definitely an interesting <laughs> idea. I'll have to figure out how to make uh, double the recipe enough to where I could really make an adequate amount. Um, uh huh. But that is definitely a possibility for a future auction. Um, right. I just thought of using your talents and you know, helping a good fundraiser, a good cause. Well, what I have tried to use my talents for is to donate um, the one-on-one -on -one cooking instructions so that people know how to yeah. make their own fudge. Uh-huh. That's a good way to... That's a good auction item. Yep. So uh, that's what uh, I have actually donated over the years, as well as uh, tech uh, stuff as well, too. So um, look out for that in right. future auctions. And um, Okay. But uh, the fudge is definitely a good idea. I was just thinking about the finished product, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that goes very I mean, the, the, the only reason why, I mean, like, it's not a unique recipe to me or anything like that. That's the only reason why I hesitate to, I mean, I guess nobody knows what the recipe is, but I hesitate. I don't want to really pass something off as mine that isn't, if that makes sense. Like, it's not, it's not a recipe I came up with myself. It's one I'm using from another source. I understand. So I that's understand. kind of why I've has I don't I, I need to be careful in how I would market such a, f a thing too because I don't it, it's not my it's homemade yes but it's not my recipe if that makes sense so um so you'd be get you'd be getting homemade fudge but it's um uh, so yeah hopefully that makes a little bit of sense why I've kind of you know I'm not that creative to where oh. I. Home okay. Recipes. All right. Nikki has her hand up. Yes, Nikki. She must have someone in Clubhouse. Where she's telling me her plane ticket number. No, no we, have we have Paulette, Paulette in Clubhouse. Clubhouse. All right. Welcome. Uh oh. Yeah, her hand went down. I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what happened here, but she hasn't uh, lowered her hand yet. So, or she hasn't There's an echo. Yet. Yep. We're hearing two Nickies. No, it won't. There we go. Okay. Um, I, I did have a question, hold Herbie, on, hold on, hold about... Hold on, hold on, Paul, it's on. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Then we'll get to you, Diane. Okay, go ahead. Me or... Uh, Paulette. Okay, Paulette, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, how often do you have the, the echo from Cinema? How, how often do I have these cooking shows? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry, you were cutting in and out there on the Zoom side. Um, we have I have them every week at the same time from um. Uh, at the exact same time, so. 
Um, so it's from 9 o'clock Central. I don't know what time zone you're in. So from 9 till... You, we go as late as 10.30. We're going to end a, a little bit early today. But... Um, um, but yeah, from 9 to 10.30 Central Time every Tuesday. So, And if you go on YouTube, you can look for the playlist Herbie's Cooking Corner where you can get many of my past shows. And I'm going to be uploading some more this week, actually. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, also, um, if you uh, subscribe to community at acb.org and uh, say, uh, write to them and say, I'd like to be added to the daily calls list, you'll, of course, get the Zoom link. And uh, you'll also get, uh, you can also subscribe to the cooks list. And I'll give you the address to subscribe in just a minute here. But uh, very good. So uh, thank you, Paulette, and uh, this, I think, must be like your, I think this is your first time tuning in, so glad to have you on board. All right, Diane, what I was your... I, yep. I think I remember you being on the games Friday. You were being with the RS games or Winston or yes. something like that. I've come here on occasion just to listen to, you know, um... So I think I remember you from there. Awesome. And I was, I'm friends with Sandy Hayes, fans, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I remember from there and her speaking of you, but I just never knew, you know, when you did your things and when you did not. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yes. Oh, the things I could say about Sandy, because she's been beating me at Dice World lately. We can't have that happening. Okay, anyway, <clears throat> that's, that's, that's beside the point. So, uh, um, Sandy actually ha hails from Nikki's first state. They're two of Pa. So, yes, um, she doesn't. Sandy beats everybody at Dice World, so. Yeah, I, I have beaten her a few times, though. So, anyway, um, that's beside the point. So, thank you, Paulette, and... Uh, Sandy, I don't know if you're out there listening, uh, but uh, thank you for uh, you know, uh, you're, you talking about me as well. And uh, all right, Diane, you had a question. Yes. Um, how did you spread the um, mixture into the pan and and um, make sure that it was even? I just use my hands, honestly. You know, just wash them. Okay. I find All that's right. the easiest and the most tactile, um, accurate, tactically accurate. Um, if you don't want to use your hands, um, maybe like if you're going to sell it to an auction and you're a little bit nervous about, you know, cooking that way for other people, then you can use a wooden spoon or a knife, butter knife. And uh, that would also kind of uh, more or less give you the same uh, type of information. Maybe one of those um, spatula things. Yep, um, spatula would also work. Yep. Um, okay, and uh, let's see if we have any more. No, we don't have any more raised hands. All right, so first of all, if you want to subscribe to our cooks list where I will send out this recipe, uh, that is acb-cooks plus sign subscribe at acblists.org. So uh, that is how you can subscribe to our cooks list. Uh, so I do want to mention the uh, round steak that I did last week did not turn out too well. It's stuck to the pan, so I'm actually going to try it with actual round steak and see if that turns out better. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So the barbecue round steak actually did turn out to be a disaster last week, but that's just how these things go. So uh, I, I tried it with New York Strip and uh, it did not work out, so... It was kind of a disappointment, but um, stuck to the pan. I think I could have done it, but it needed a lot less cooking than the, what the recipe actually called for. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, let's see. Oh, so yes, for those of you, again, reminder, if you're listening on the stream, if you subscribe to Community, you can uh, learn about the other calls that are happening, including... Um, the friendship circle hang, hanging uh, the happening next hour. Oh dear, we've got uh, balancing body and mind. We've got the Braille call talking about the e-readers today that Dorland's doing. 
That's not going to be streamed, but on the stream side, you do get Unmute Presents, you do get games to play with Lady A, and you do get helpful hints with homophones. Yes, that call is returning. So uh, glad to Sorry, say Coffee that. Clutch. Coffee, coffee Clutch. Clutch is next. Uh, yeah, okay. Friendship Circle was last night. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's, you know, it's the same call, just a different name, different account. Okay, not that it matters for you guys for the account unless you save links, of course, but uh, um, it's the same call, and it's ran by Bill, but uh, otherwise, and, and I love you, Bill. Um, all right, guys, so we're going to wrap things up early. Remember, the cooks list, once again, is acb-cooks plus subscribe. It's a plus sign. Subscribe at groups, uh, not groups, acb-lists.org. I'm sorry, is it acb lists ACB lists. Oh dear. Um. You did say acblists.org the last time. Yes. All right. So, um. I will double check that for you. Yeah, acblists.org, so there you go. Um, so I want to thank Diane and Nikki for taking care of us all today. And um, next week, it's going to be mint chocolate chip cupcakes. So stay tuned for that. Oh, I was going to mention the ACB cooks list. That deals with any cooking call we have ha happening on here. So you will also get some recipes from It's Electric as well. Um, Jeannie's good about posting some uh, very good Instant Pot recipes over there. So make sure you check out that list. So this is the last call for hands for this call. Last call for hands for this call. Oh, I love it. Okay. No hands. No hands. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We get to leave early today. And um, both of you may end the respective rooms. And I'll see you all next week. Okay. Ending the stream. And Bye, guys. Bye. Ending Zoom. Bye.